Hello everybody and thank you for joining tonight. This is your host Nino presenting you a classical Asus EEE PC 701 4G running Debian bookworm. And while I have made an episode about a great operating system on the EEE PC in the past, and at that time it was Slita's GNU Linux, I feel the necessity to make another one for this machine I prepared for my kids and came to the conclusion that Debian really is the best option. But let me show you what we're talking and how it looks and how it came there and why this time no Slitas. So, first of all, please allow me to a little bit increase the screen once it has booted, like now, so that we can see more easily what exactly is happening. As you can note, the boot took about one minute, which for a mas machine with a Celeron processor of something like, what was it, 630 megahertz is not bad at all considering that this is a modern operating system. So, what happened? My seven-year-old and my five-year-old decided that it's time for them to own a computer. Hardly something I would be opposed against. Now, let me just get in for a second. Uh, yeah, okay, the login, you may know that this is Kitten. But the password, you will allow me to enter in some privacy. Well, hardly would I be opposed, of course, to giving a computer to my kids. And the choice very quickly came on an EEE PC 701 because of the size and the relative agility of this type of machine. The only issue really was the operating system to put on its small internal 4 gigabyte hard drive. Now, the usual disadvantage of the EEE PC that it is small. In the eyes of my kids, was a big plus because they wanted something small. They have small hands. So for them, actually, this keyboard feels more interesting than a large one. So great. The, the machine was chosen quickly. The question was what to put on it. And I went ahead and tried Slitas, my common and usual choice. Unfortunately, Slitas, the classical variant I am using, the last full release, is already too old and I didn't want to give them something which doesn't have Python 3 in case one day we decide to learn a little bit Python. So Slitas was out of the game with its classical release and its new cooking, uh, like continuous release cycle, so to say, it's like rolling release distribution style now, is completely broken installer wise. I wasted hours in trying to fix it. So Slitas was out of the game. Next came a, a whole lot of so-called lightweight distributions. For instance, Antix, which I normally did like and I am advertising elsewhere, but on a four gigabyte disc, this leaves you with nearly nothing. And, and that was still the best of the terrible. I also tried something called Q4OS. Boy, was that bad. That was some sort also of some sort of Debian derivative, which in the end left me with something like 200 megabyte and no office suit. Like how do small distribution creators even approach the task? Your task would be to establish some form of near complete selection of software for most common tasks, which is however smaller than a user would normally get by selecting a default desktop distribution. That is the fundamental task of a mini Linux. That art seems to have been totally lost for, to my surprise, it turned out that the full-blown Debian system, as can be seen here, 
is actually by default installed smaller than the so-called mini Linuxes. And on I went installing therefore Debian Bookworm, the presently newest version of Debian. And I tried to make it very frankly and sadly as complete as possible for the good likelihood that I never install another operating system on this type of machine again. Now, the central issue one of course has with this is what browser to put on the machine, right? Well, I made my life easy here. I went for NetSurf. NetSurf is a comparatively crappy, very primitive browser, which is not really able to do who knows what um, complex tasks. However, fits the bill in so far as this is a kid's machine and they don't, it sh shouldn't be too much in the internet anyway, right? As a fail safe, <laughs> I did not only install NetSurf, of course, but I also installed Lynx. And I don't mean the Lynx variant, not, not, not this one. This one I don't like particularly. I installed rather this one. And Lynx is not a bad browser. It is just non-graphical, unless you demand the graphical version. But just look at this, like <laughs> the way it is showing here the Austrian Google side with the U umlaut, the U umlaut and the O umlaut and so on, that's extremely decent. So for instance, if I would go for the Bulgarian one, actually, I'm curious what would happen. So I press escape, for instance, press enter on the file menu, say go to URL, say www.google.bg, the Bulgarian one. Let's see what will happen there. Weird. Okay, let's try to go to some somewhere else. Um, escape. Go to URL. Novinite.bg. Let's just try some sort of Bulgarian news site to see what is it going to do. And you see, I'm actually getting the Cyrillic display. So. <laughs> well, this is in no way comfortable to, to navigate very much. I must say for a browser on the console, this is from my perspective the non plus ultra. So this is really the main thing to, to get out of the way straight. We are a little bit stranded browser wise. But the rest actually turned out not so bad. The only difficulty being what to select a software in particular for children. So <laughs> the obligatory paint program, of course, had to be there. And I went for RGB paint because this is really, really simple and, and would not, um, would not be too, too hard for a kid to master. And I do tell you my older daughter already loved it. So let's get here. Yeah. Her first creation of today was this. So this is the first time she has had access to a computerized paint program. And that is her little person whom she painted. So I can say the paint program had been dearly accepted by the kids. <laughs> then other interesting topics, because I have noted that as of recent, the Mini Linux creators have become somehow extremely uncreative. They do not explore what small alternatives there are. They just steal from each other and things have boiled down to sort of the same set of crappy, not all that minimalistic software. Now, if we're looking at, for instance, terminals, the thing this comes by default with uh, is an Xterm version, which however has no right click capability. Well, that, that's a little bit unfortunate, right? So instead of that, because if, if you introduce someone to a terminal, it better be nice. I went for LX terminal. LX terminal does not fit perfectly the screen, unfortunately, because if you go for editing the preferences, then your menus are out of the screen and so is your 
OK and Cancel button. Not all is lost though. <laughs> you reach just enough in order to click things through, right? You cannot click OK down there, but you can click things through. So everything's OK actually with you. You can select here whatever you want. And then uh, how to save something or well, whatever you have selected wherever in the tabs, I suggest you navigate back to this very first tab, but then click on the visual bell, unclick it again, press tab two times and then press enter. And then whatever changes you would have made, okay, now didn't make any, but they would be then accepted. And, and that way <laughs> we actually have here a terminal. Now, what I have not yet told the kids is that they do have a lot of nice terminal programs, including Midnight Commander and, and even a spreadsheet SC, and they are having Word Grinder as a word processor. And, and, and they're having even, you know, this is really nice, the nice editor. I don't know whether you're aware of this. This is a command line editor, which looks like this. Okay, like, like a little bit of advertisement and then you press escape and then you're having nice menus. It really is a nice editor. This is something which very much reminds me of the default editor in FreeBSD, which I liked a lot. Are you sure to save, to not save the document? Yes, I'm sure. So nice editor is there, nano is there and, and you know, <laughs> all sorts of things are there like I also have to admit I went a little bit, well, spraying around in the programming languages department, but we do have BW basic. So this is something like CW, C, um, not C, but GW basic. And so a fundamental use of the computer, as one would expect, is indeed possible. Now, Naturally, I also went for that, <laughs> a Lisp interpreter, but that hardly surprises anyone, I believe. It was unavoidable to have that. <laughs> there's, there's Python 3 there. This, this is nice, but you cannot install uh, Python, Python 3. You cannot install, unfortunately, pip. The Python package manager is something like 250 megabyte. And sorry, we don't have that much space. Uh, I, yes, forgot that. I love how Python always keeps advising you. And I don't mean that cynically. This is really amazing. So you can see here, despite me being not too saving on stuff, I am still having some 520 megabyte free. I do not have sudo. If I want to become a root, I have to use su. So I have made a little bit of weird compromises. But anyway, returning on the topic, the most minimalistic programs are rarely explored today and I did my best to get them on here so as to be able to get the most interesting stuff that they might wish to play with. For instance, are you aware what is likely the smallest X editor? Well, it is likely X edit. Now, the point why I'm not going to advise you to use xEdit is that it has a little bit of uh, different handling than you would be used to today. But nonetheless, it does look beautiful and works aptly. So when you install x11, you automatically get the X editor. Just nobody talks about it nowadays. And they're all talking about how get it or something with like 30 or 50 or something megabyte is a is a little program, which it is not. So save then quit again. No, I don't want to. <laughs> so there, there you could see that. Now, the one I did go for was actually called N edit. And here you see it. This is very much like X edit only uh, like you can see it here from these these like 90s or 80s aesthetics. <laughs> it's a motif type of editor. Very, very small. 
Only this is more like what we are used to seeing nowadays. So this is like the Windows editor. Yes, it is white on blue. Hi. I did set the colors. Actually, I did not only set the colors, I also thought I set the font. But okay, uh, <laughs> we can also go for another one. Very nice is clean Schumacher. Ach, clean Schumacher style. Hmm. 12. So, hi, I did set the colors. You have it here again. I can change fonts and, 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 and all other things too. So, this is a very, very small text editor, which you will not see nearly anywhere else. What surprised me is that apparently Genie Gianni written, which is actually a programmer's text editor, is also rather small. I did not go for Genie because it has all these weird symbols um, up here, which might be disturbing to two little girls when they initially write their attempts at diaries, but later on Genie will be a possibility. Now, of course, the, the other thing which one needs is a calculator, right? Calculator turned to be pretty small, at least acceptably small. In reality, we would not be needing that either, for <laughs> we could, of course, use Xcalc. Yeah, indeed. X Windows comes also with a calculator. The trouble is, I mean, look what it looks like. So I thought in order to not frighten them, let's go for a more normal calculator. But this is a capable piece of equipment. It's, it's really nice to have that. As a PDF viewer, I went for Ghost View. I also have uh, XPDF here. Image viewer, well, that will be Mirage. That's actually a very nice program which is also extremely lightweight. There's also, there were also other options like FE, like F-E-H and others, but I was never sure what of this is command line, what is not. The other thing is, how do you actually take a picture of yourself? And here I'll show you a nifty trick. My media player is VLC. And VLC has, of course, the option to select a capture device and as a capture device you can pick video zero and say play and yeah smile and wave <laughs> what we can of course do now is also to take a snapshot And there, you saw, I just took a picture of myself. So, it is possible to replace all of these things with, like, all these separate programs with, with VLC. We have here command line options too. There are socks, there are, like, for sound files. There's FFmpeg for everything. There's FS webcam for command line snapshots. But that would be a nice graphical option. What is, of course, fun, nice and dandy is that we have Audacity, though its icon is not caught properly. And, yeah, then finally we're having a screen shooter tool and the sound control. Yeah, will Audacity start? That is the question. So you could see Audacity starts <laughs> and, yeah works at least reasonably acceptably i have not tried yet my xfce4 screen shooter but this seems to have been uh the the smallest one that i could find as a graphical tool if anybody knows something smaller yes please let me know but things being as they are <laughs> you see so i got i got a screenshot actually i will not 
save it. I will just, maybe I can open it with. Does it have this option? No, it doesn't. So there's no desktop integration for half of the stuff. I'll come to that in a second. And finally, we're having Pavo control as a control of the speakers, input devices, and so on and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about potential issues one meets while installing all of this. Well, sound definitely was an issue. I'm not exactly sure how I solved it. I tried lots of programs, installed lots of um, also utilities I installed, I installed the Pulse Audio utilities. In the end, somehow, I don't know how, I got Pulse Audio to work. That's like my main criticism point on um, Debian Bookworm, that the audio was still a bit more adventurous than it should have been. Maybe they also don't assume that you will install it on an EEE PC for g though. Anyway, now there's one thing which of course kids in particular in school, will need an office suit, right? So what to pick there? And f first, I was thinking the word processor is pretty clear. That's gonna be Abby word. There's also one which is called TED, but TED is only able to produce LRTF files and is also otherwise rather limited. So Abby word was fine. And while it was a bit of a piglet at something over, 100 megabyte, something like 130, 150, something ridiculous. <laughs> like more than my entire hard disk of my Windows 3.1 one for work group system, which had a very nice uh, office system on it. <laughs> so, so that had become a bit of a piglet, but that would have been acceptable. However, spreadsheet wise, I was truly stranded. I mean, the Caligara office suit was also more than half a gigabyte or something like 600 something megabyte. LibreOffice was insane, a gigabyte and a half. Like there, there would have been really no space on this machine for anything. Although we all know that the Xandros, which came with the EEE PC, did have an office suit. So it was possible, definitely. Just LibreOffice has really expanded in size lately. And then I was ending, ending up with Gnumeric. And frankly, installing Gnumeric cost me something like 600 megabyte, 500, 600 megabyte. That was crazy. Like how can a spreadsheet be that large? And I thought of installing another office suit called SIAG Office, Scheme in a Grid Office, with the last known release in 2006, but there was no package for it and then the whole thing looked more hassle than it's worth. So I dropped Siag and just thought I'm going to go with Abbey Word and Gnumeric until it dawned on me that OpenOffice, the original office suit, is not dead. It is now transferred to Apache OpenOffice, maintained there and because all of the development is going into LibreOffice, it is in near frozen condition. And <laughs> therefore, it is comparatively small, yet nonetheless, pretty recent. You realize this one is a build from February 2023. So this is not an all that antique office suit. It does not get all the newest cool features, which the other office suits are getting, but for typing documents and doing table calculations, this is more than adequate and it does not need all that much RAM or anything else. So if you try to make such a little project of installing an office suit on such an ancient EPC, e I certainly do encourage you to try open office. That really seems to be the best option for this machine. And while I have focused here on the uh, spreadsheet program and the word processor, I confidently assure you that all the other open office programs are available all the same. So if we look here on the office, yeah, <laughs> we're having here also draw and impress and math and 
a printer administration, my God. We will just save to PDF and print it elsewhere. Uh, this, this is not going to be a big topic. So presentation wizard, you see, no, I certainly don't want to create a presentation and draw. Gosh, I even forgot what this was all about. And math, I haven't used even once. <laughs> but they are nonetheless all here. So you can see openoffice.all is, is all, all the same here. And I can, I don't know, draw whatever I want. Uh, how does that even work? I have to admit I never drew anything here. But yeah, it will be possible to do somehow. Yeah, let's scribble here. A nice smiley. Let us put a smile on that face. However, that would be possible. I mean, there are smileys evidently and I could have just used a smiley, but it's easier. It's, it's funnier when you, when you do this yourself, when it's like most horribly done. So yeah, I, I do want, I do want this. Yes, please. Free form line. Yeah, so we have a smiley. <laughs> Open office uh, draw is working. This card. And that is how I really say I solved also the office suit. So they can record sound, they can make photos and videos of themselves. Things can be edited in their paint program. There's also another one I'm considering of getting, and I might get it just in front of you right now. <laughs> Hypothetically, one day, if they felt so inclined, they could do something like... Uh, how how do, I, do I even invoke, invoke idle? Not even sure. Is it, is it Python idle? Okay, whatever. Well, Python I actually showed you. I got also prologue that was hard to get though because the common choice nowadays which is SWI prologue like SWI prologue is hundreds of megabytes large and I went for G prologue which is six megabyte large like you really have to be careful what you pick and now that we have been examining the the um, programs which I set up. <laughs> what am I running here? Well, the, those who, who know will immediately have recognized that this, ladies and gentlemen, is Windowmaker. Now, Windowmaker is an amazing window manager for X, which automatically got everything into its menus into some sort of relatively useful categories and for a screen like this where you have very little vertical space it is very nice that window maker allows you a horizontal placement of a dock it has multiple virtual uh, if i create another one yeah uh, workspaces i could make a workspace only Okay, yeah, anyway, it has them. I just forgot how exactly to create them. <laughs> Gosh. So, it, 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 trust me, dude. Source, trust me, dude. It has multiple workspaces. <laughs> and... Uh, the, it, it, it is themable, it has everything you might ever want to have and, and you do not have to set up the menus all by yourself. You, it, it picks them out it's up itself. I was trying also G, JWM, the Java Window Manager. It is like one of the smallest in existence bar things like WM2, like Window Manager 2, which is just ridiculous. It just has the windows and it has no management of anything whatsoever. So GWM is very small, but it did not catch the applications. You would have to edit the GWM menus manually. And I mean, really, <laughs> who, who cares? So uh, 
what you saw as a login screen, let's let's get out of here and just, just see this again for a second. That's XDM. So we all know about KDM, the the like KDE login manager, and then there is GDM for GNOME and blah blah. Everybody has its own DM. But you know what? XDM is the original and it is a really lightweight and small. And if I now log in back again. Tada, back we are where we were. So <laughs> that's actually a, a really nice setup of things. And I still have about half a gigabyte free. The, there are certain limitations, which in all frankness, I should mention. And the first one of them is that there is no auto mounting of media. There is a USB stick, well mounted. There is nobody to do that for you. But USB sticks are not yet a topic. And given that we have Python, there is also this integrated web server module. So maybe they will not need that all that much anyway. But <laughs> let's say the, the handling of USB sticks will be a topic that will be more adventurous in the future. Still, it's not who knows what. I could pack it into a script if it ever becomes an issue. And, and again, it will not be one. So what did I want to show you next? Ah, yes. One issue I had during installation, and that was in ETC. Oh, this keyboard for grown up hands is a different topic. Sources.list. Yes. See, the apt sources.list file is starting here with a line telling deb cd-rom blah 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 that of course was a usb stick which i used for the installation trouble is after you finish the installation the usb stick will still be insisted upon as being a cd-rom so if you try to install anything whatsoever the system will shout at you no no insert the cd-rom please there is a usb stick and you just look look sort of stupid <laughs> like I mean I, I did insert the thing what do you want from me right so the solution is to open and edit this file and comment out with just such a hash sign this first line with the deb cd-rom thing to tell it no no forget about the cd-rom just get everything from whatever mirror has been selected and you know quit the nonsense so that worked nicely and the one thing I am curious of installing though is MT Paint. I believe to remember that it was nice. Apt install. So this laptop has been made to fulfill the necessities of school kids for a couple of years and the whole thing turned so nice that I believe it is going to be my default system in the future. And now let us look at the most important type of program one has, which costs me two and a half megabyte and I might just keep it and not exchange anything, but just have two paint programs. Because when you are five or seven, can there really be too many paint programs? <laughs> yeah, you see, empty paint and RGB paint are allegedly from one and the same set of authors. But you see how this is starting up? It's like somehow less nice. It's like somehow more complex. And while I can, I don't know, go, go here and draw something with red on black i mean this is this is not as easy as the other program i, I like it i have been doing a lot of interesting things actually in empty paint but rgb paint is just still the friendlier program i believe yes maybe it has uh, more effects maybe it has more complexities but the question is do you really need that or not 
well, what the hell did that even do? Ah, yes, of course. I think RGB paint is missing such a straight line to, tool. Now, this, the problem with empty paint is it's, it's small, very nice, but a little bit counterintuitive, whereas RGB paint is not. It's just working even though it does not have a straight line tool. <laughs> well, we will live with that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has turned out to be the unlikely contender of mini Linux, a full-blown Debian bookworm system with Window Maker as, des as, as um, Window Manager with XDM, which you do not need to configure, you simply install and reboot as login manager and with ancient open office as office suite. And if you have that, you still get with all of the plethora of stuff I have here, half a gigabyte and more free for your own files, which is a reasonable setup for a machine of this size. And with that, I truly hope that this little friend will serve for many happy years. To you, many thanks for watching and heartily be encouraged to try Debian on the EEPC 701 4G. I do hope to greet you here soon again for other technical adventures and more. Until our next encounter, I wish you a wonderful time and I certainly encourage you to become regular visitors. Have a wonderful evening, and from me, goodbye. Post dictum. Gosh, I remembered what I wanted to show you. It's called Bleach Bit. And it is a software to erase unessential parts of the system. And to me, it gave back more than more than three or four hundred megabyte so the hell of a lot it did matter a lot i have half a gigabyte free and likely 80 percent of it are due to bleach bit what it what it does is you can click on here to to do auto clean auto remove uh clean to to remove here temporary files to clean all sorts of stuff which tends to accumulate in your system and tends to eat precious resources. So very much be encouraged to try out Bleach Bit if you are uh, using Debian on an EEPC.